Our theme tonight, as Mike said, is our fourth baptismal promise, our promise to serve all people following in the name of Jesus. The song we will sing right after the message is Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are wealthy and poor, varied in color and race. Neighbors are nearby and far away. Show us how to serve our neighbors. Pastor Heather, Pastor Steve, and Mike have shared their baptismal stories, and I will share mine as well. Even though I'm a cradle Lutheran, my father was raised Baptist. The one concession my mother made to him was that we would not be baptized as infants, so we were dedicated in a Baptist church. When it came time for me to be confirmed in ninth grade at Grace Lutheran Church in Royersford, Pennsylvania, I had to be baptized at the same service I was confirmed at. I remember being very embarrassed about it because I didn't like being singled out among the crowd, but now that I'm much older, I realized that it was important to my father, so I understood why I had to wait. I think everyone realizes that different Christian denominations have different beliefs about baptism, especially whether they believe in infant baptism or if full immersion is required. I did a little research and realized there are plenty of ways baptism differs in various churches, not only the age of consent, full immersion or sprinkling, but is it a sacrament or a symbolic ritual? Is it done for the forgiveness of sins? Is it Trinitarian, done in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? And of course, there's a question of sponsors and the type of garment to be worn. I think the important thing for Lutheran Christians who believe in infant baptism is that we have parents, sponsors, and a whole neighborhood of support answering for us when we are infants. Then we affirm our baptism at confirmation or upon joining the church as a new member. At Grace Lutheran Church, we had three years of confirmation instruction, just like we do here and now. We sat around with a kindly white-haired pastor named Reverend Ralph Kasner, and he answered all of our questions about being a Lutheran Christian. I don't remember exactly what he said, but I remember that many times we all sat on folding chairs in a circle in the hallway, and he was happy to talk to us about God. And I wouldn't do what I do today if our music director, Jack Charles, hadn't taken me under his wing and taught me how to be a good church musician and a good person. He had a heart of service through music, and he nurtured countless kids like me to become better musicians and better Christians. Ralph Kasner and Jack Charles were both mentors and good neighbors to me and my family. In my position as Minister of Music, I encourage all people who have an interest and aptitude to join a musical ensemble. They work hard with their neighbors and their directors to present music that uplifts and supports worship. They know their work is an offering to God. Neighbors can be as near as the family members you're sitting next to right now or the family members you grew up with. Neighbors can be the people you come in contact with here at church or at your work or in your social circles. Pastor Heather pointed out that Martin Luther believed that we can be a witness to Christ by doing our everyday jobs to the best of our abilities. We don't all have to be pastors or professional church workers to live out our vocation and serve our neighbors. I often think about my mother who had a heart for service, but she was not musical and not one to work well with a group of people. She definitely liked the one-on-one -on -one approach. She was into what I call small deeds, a handwritten letter, a cake or casserole for a neighbor, picking up trash at the park, inviting a child from the state school to Thanksgiving dinner. Even her profession of nursing later on in life was that of a home health care nurse. She served one neighbor at a time. 
And my father, who is still active in the church, was a funeral director for many years. And I never realized until recently that he definitely served God and his neighbor through the act of helping people in their time of grief. When I think of the word neighbor, I think of the children's television program that was on the air years ago, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I am, I'm currently reading a biography of Fred Rogers, and I had never given him much thought. But last year, Sarah Serwacki and I went to a church music conference in Dallas. We saw Tom Trenny direct his college choir and lead sessions with workshop participants. Tom is the minister of music at First Plymouth Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. He's also director of the choirs at Nebraska Wesleyan University. And, and I said to Sarah, I leaned over and whispered to her, I said, is this guy for real? He acts like Mr. Rogers. <laughs> no one is that gentle, loving, and kind. And when Tom told us that one of his heroes and role models was indeed Mr. Rogers, I thought, I'm not surprised. I don't know if you all remember, there was a very moving movie that came out in, in 2019 entitled A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. And I thought it was just going to be a cute little children's film. And, and it wasn't. I don't know if you all saw it. But it was a very emotional film about Fred and Rogers and his ability to connect with a cynical journalist who had quite a few family problems and who thought Fred was just a facade and not for real. As I'm reading Fred's bio, I, I found out some fascinating things about him. He was born and raised in Latrobe, Pennsylvania in a very well-to-do family. He was sickly and kind of chubby as a child and somewhat of a loner. He used to play the piano and write songs and do puppet shows in his attic. But he blossomed in college and went on to get a music degree at Rollins College in Florida. And then he felt the tug to become a Presbyterian minister. He went to seminary and he was ordained with a mission to provide quality television programming for children, which is quite a, a unique thing for, for the Presbyterians to do, to actually ordain him to do that. Fred was instrumental in the birth of public television, and he had very high standards about what he thought was appropriate to show small children. He took his unique gifts and blended them into something that was truly remarkable. His show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, was on the air for 33 years and he gave many, many children a sense of self-worth and curiosity about the world. The neighbors he served were children and families nearby and far away. His core values were, you are special and so is everyone else in this world. Love people as they are, just be kind. You are important just the way you are. Look for the helpers. You make the world a special place by being yourself. These simple direct messages apply to all of us, not just to small children. So how will you serve your neighbors nearby and far away? Amen. <laughs>